<laughs> That's a good one. Steve here and, and Larson, did you write these promos? They, they said they were going to be in, in attendance and, and again, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop hitting that start button so quickly. I don't mean to title of my show though. So again, welcome to another show with Hobo Tom and his girlfriend or girlfriend. One is sick. One's going to Texas. Texas. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some WWE SmackDown. And this was actually a fairly entertaining show. The matches weren't over the top terrific. It was enjoyable though. But as always, as I start off with any show, uh, I was talking to a couple of people, one at the Friendoverse. So Nick Kelly, this video dedication goes out to you. Because you're my tag team partner. And on the Discord, over where I watch my videos, come to guy. This Mundo Madness goes out for you. And with all that being said, then let's get to the show. It starts off with the one and only Miss TV. That's awesome. And this time, Miz goes a little meta and pulls out the script that he's supposed to read, just like all wrestlers are supposed to read. And he does it so deadpan. And I'm here to note Miz TV. First, my guest is going to be Drew McIntyre, accompanied by the breast. Oh, no. Pest? Some writer gave me this after they put their coffee on it. Oh, the pest of the world, Shane McMahon. So Shane, uh, Drew McIntyre comes out. It's kind of pretty cool, though. Uh, he... He was getting wetted when he was talking. Elias came out to Electro Elias, which is always good. And then, of course, Shane <laughs> said that he is baked potato face. Baked potato face DNA. Funny. That was good stuff. Again, comes out. Uh, Elias comes out to you stuck. Wow, they're not being nice about it either. And this leads off to the first match because. Shane realizes that the Drew still, that um, the Miz still wants to beat him up, so it's a semi gauntlet match. So the first match of the evening, we're gonna start off really quick. This is all WWE needs: a quick little introduction. Why are you gonna have this match? Oh, you still don't like me here to to get to me to fight these two. Makes sense, especially because he is the boss, and if he signs the checks, he you have to do what he says. So it starts off with the Miz versus Elias. And this was kind of fun. Uh, the match kind of started really quick. Um, Elias said it's kind of walking the rope, arm breaker, arm breaker spot. The thing with this is that unlike other gauntlet matches, make sure if I roll back, that's not there. It's bad to roll over Kitty Cat's tail. But unlike other gauntlet matches, this is really short. I think the whole gauntlet takes like takes about thirty minutes. It was okay. Ooh. Yeah, I have enough for lad stuff to do. Got some fishing in. 
Here, let me show you my fishies. My little fishies I caught after after I talk about this. Sure, that sounds good. Okay. So my cell phone's working again too, which makes me happier. I think I just I'm just getting burnt out, I think. I think. Every so often. You do have to turn off cell phones every so often. And update them. I think I learned that. So, you know, no pictures of feet. There we go. I'll show that picture in a little bit. But I did some fishing today, so I'm kind of tired. I still have to go to the gym, apply for one other job. Oh, because I'm going to have a new job soon, too. Or at least a new temporary job. And tomorrow I have to go to Deltona, which means I'm going to get some breakfast tomorrow. Ooh, that's right. I do get to get breakfast tomorrow. I likey, likey breakfast. Um, so the, the Miz goes over Elias, hits the skull crushing finale on him. Eh, it was a ham sandwich match. It was really quick. I think this match only took like five, maybe seven minutes. And then Drew McIntyre's turn for the gauntlet. So then we have goes transitions right to the Miz versus Drew McIntyre. Drew just starts beating on Miz, which is smart, because Miz is already tired. Just pound on him a little bit. And Miz does get to fight back. However, Drew's just too much for him. That makes sense. That one shot. Woo! That dropped the Miz. And, uh, of course, Drew gongs into the ring post the right way. Take some notes, Goldberg. Um, so, again, that kind of sets up for some outside spots for the Miz. He actually didn't go flying over the ropes. He did kind of that, that double drop kick to both, I think it was Shane and Drew. Eventually, Drew's just too much. He just overpowers him. Hit him with the Glasgow kiss. That Scottish headbutt. Scottish headbutts reign supreme. And then it was the Claymore. And Drew McIntyre wins. You would expect that. This was a fine cheeseburger match. And lo and behold, Shane makes the match. Of course Shane's going to make a match. He's already beat up. So then very quickly, it's the Miz versus Shane. Miz just says, oh, it's Shane's turn. He gets that, he gets that second life. He begins to Hulk out. Um, jump Shane, does classic ground and pound. But Miz is just too beat up by now. Um, eventually, Shane does get his licks in, puts him in the triangle. Miz has to tap out to the triangle by Shane. Triangle even done the wrong way? It's a can of soup. Shane McMahon won. So I hope... I don't think they're going to continue this, or I hope they don't. And have another match. Unless they did it stomping grounds, but then the Miz would have to win that. So again, the Miz just kind of runs down Shane McMahon saying, oh, you're only the best because I, I was injured. And then you, you slipped out of my hands, and then, and then you distracted me. So it makes sense that they have to fight again. It was okay. Uh, let's see here. And, and I don't know what Shane did to his elbow, but like from here to like here was all kinds of bruised up. It's not that fake bruise. This is that like yellowish Purplish bruise. Ugh. I've had those before. Those just look nasty. Then Ember Moon, I guess, is like checking things out on her little tablet or playing video games on her cell phone. Whatever wrestlers do in the back. And again, Mandy Rose comes back with a whole stack full of her magazines. Just shoves them right in front of Ember Moon. And Shannon Baszler just kind of Begins to bully Ember Moon. Like, oh, why are you playing your video game, you loser? And then that pissed off Ember Moon. And, and oh, sh uh, Shane, uh, Shane, Sonya Deville also just knocked on her little mobile device, whatever that is. Those are expensive. That's why I'm so happy that my thing worked. And in fact, I am so happy that I got my cell phone to work. I did go fishing today. I was extremely happy. And I caught kind of a bunch of pinfish and some like weird snook looking thing. And you know, these are what pinfish look like, folks. Yep, that's my cooler. And they are legal to keep because I now have my fishing license that I also got this morning. And, yep. So, as long as I think the limit's 100 pounds or 50 fish. 
if I caught 50 pinfish or 100 pounds of pinfish, I don't even think I could do that. Well, legally, I can't do that. But I think I'd have to literally fish like all day in several spots. The heck? I did lose a rig, so. Oh, I have to do that too this weekend. Um. Oh, and happy Father's Day, everyone. Or I'll mention that Monday. I'll fi I'll figure something out for, 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 for Monday. But then uh, we have Daniel Bryan and Rowan come out. They're initially going to face the YOLO County Champions, whose belts are literally made out of cardboard, drawn on with both black marker. <laughs> Red marker and blue marker. It was funny. They're the YOLO County Champs. AJ Kirsch and Dave Dontry, I think. Jobbers. Local enhancement talent. So they're like, and then Heavy Machinery came out. Hey, Tucky! They're going against some jobbers. I want to fight them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, okay, Otis, calm down. Tuck. Yeah, Tucky. That's not what I can do. That's an easy voice to, to, at least for me it is. Yeah. We're blue collar. You want those titles. Yeah. I'm going to be the caterpillar. And go hit on, on Mandy Rose some more. Otis Tozovich. Awesome. Tucker Knight has to get up there, but Otis knows his character, folks. And he can do his character work amazingly. So have so heavy machinery come out. They're the they, they call Daniel Bryan and Rowan. You are elitist cowards. Yeah. Tucky, that's the name I gave him. And Otis is the best. Um this was Oh, so this led up to the match. <laughs> it kind of looks like I made those belts. Uh, Daniel Bryan said, you know what? If you think you're so deserving, you take on these two fine champions. So then it became a match between Heavy Machinery and, I didn't write their name, AJ Kirsch and Dave Duprep, or whatever his name is, the Yellow Champions. All you need to know is that it was a squash match. It was thoroughly enjoying them. It was uh, Tucker Knight got in a couple of hits on the one guy. Then he tagged in Otis to do the Caterpillar. The other guy got in either. This was so much more entertaining than what they're doing with the Iconics, only because I think Heavy Machinery has that natural chemistry, especially Otis Dozovich has all chemistry and all character. Daniel Bryan's good. He, he, he can do no wrong. Again, Daniel Bryan... He could have a two-star map, two-star match with a broom. AJ Styles could have a three-star match against a broom. Daniel Bryan's not that far behind. He's a two, two and a half star match with a broom. Uh, so then there was a pop-up compactor, which was amazing looking. Like literally, Otis picked the guy up after running off the ropes, threw him and threw him over, like popped him up. Otis caught him. And then compactored him. And I'll tell you what, it was a fun match. It's a squash match. It's still a fun match, though. I understood it. It made sense. It's a squash match, though. But it's a fun one. So it's a ham sandwich. And you have R Truth. He's just so confused. He's gone through sleep deprivation. He's calling it the 7-Eleven Championship. <laughs> it's funny. Um, Carmella says, oh, she heard someone coming down the hallway. She didn't know who it was. Told him to get in the box. Just as you thought, the box locks. Says, hey, I need air. Ginger's like, 
let me go get referee. And just stay here for a little bit longer. It's like, I'm, uh, I'm fading out of consciousness. That was funny. Again, that, what they're doing with the 24-7 championship is actually really good. And it's enjoyable. Then the next match, who Sonya Deville versus Carmella. Um, Sonya Deville, I do like her new ring gear. Again, I will say good things if I can say good things. I'll say bad things if I so choose to. And if it is bad, when you're good, I'll say you're good. When you're bad, I'll say you're bad and, and rip you for being bad. Like, boo Sonya Deville. Uh, she carries the rainbow flag handkerchief in her, in her pants because she is part of the lesbian community. L L L L uh, LGBT. I don't know what it is. Whatever. One day she's going to slip up and stick her tongue down Mandy Rose's throat, play tonsil hockey with her. I want to be there or watch that to see it. Because I'll be like, yes! 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 Although she did look like she was going to play tonsil hockey with Carmella for a moment. I'll get to that. Um, uh, she also looks... She also has, again, she's wearing the pants. I like the new outfit. It looks good on her. Um, I'll tell you what. The pants look good on her. And... Oh, I did hear her too sweet during the match. Someone does remember when you go one, two, sweet. Uh, DeVille's wrestling is a lot better than Lacey Evans. I'll give her that much. Again, I will give credit where credit is due. Sonya DeVille's becoming a much more accomplished, much more smoother professional wrestler than Lacey Evans. When I saw their match, it was, it was horrible. In NXT, their first match, it was Lacey Evans versus Sonya DeVille. One, I didn't know who either of the women are. I saw both of them at my gym, which I've told that story a thousand times. I need to hear that again. I'll tell it again, though. Um, I was at the gym kind of at my non-normal hours. I saw a blonde-haired woman with a black-haired woman on a machine. Both look physically fit. So no, maybe they're here all the time. The one had a very obvious tattoo. I go to the wrestling matches. I saw that tattoo. I saw you at my gym. So every time I go to the gym when NXT shows up, I keep an eye out for people with weird tattoos, facial hair, colored hair, or odd body types. Again, Lars Sullivan is pretty obvious. Johnny Gargano, not so obvious. Candice LeRae, who are you? Again, who is like MJ Jensen? MJ Jackson? Oh, it must have been a while. Again, very obvious. Some not so obvious. Renita Gonzalez? Very obvious. Aaliyah shows up. Not so obvious. So, uh, Boo Sonya Deville, um, again, she's getting, she's becoming a better wrestler. Um, Carmella does get distracted, distracted by Mandy Rose. For a second there, it was a pinning combination, and then Carmella reversed that into the check your neck. And then, of course, she got distracted because Mandy Rose put Sonya Deville's foot on the ropes. That's what friends were for. And, again, it was another distraction. <laughs> Sonya Deville just, 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 just sat on her while Car Carmella's legs was kind of up in, like, a jackknife position. Like, the hair covered her head. Those two could have been doing something underneath that, that cover of hair. Just saying. But uh, Boo Sonya Deville wins. It, it wasn't a bad match. I can't get excited over a Boo Sonya Deville match. For the fact that she, my princess, Kimberly. And between those two, they are having a little talk about social media issues. Again, if they were really good friends, Alexa would go to her cell phone. And show her pictures of all the fish she caught earlier that day. But no. She has to show her the fact that 
he blocked Bailey because Bailey said not nice things. Who cares? Um, Alexa has now become a manipulative Alexa Bliss. And then we have the New Day come out for a promo. And Big E hugs everyone. Gives everyone a hug, including some random red-haired girl. I'd like to give some random red-haired woman a hug. That would make me feel good. Tranquilo. Um, that and, again, <laughs> the whole inside joke about we're not good enough to book us to be six-time champions like Charlotte is. Oh! hey oh Again, that was pretty good. Uh, that, no, I know everyone gets, go, wanna gets back to E3. People were like, boo. I guess E3 wasn't as good as the show as it was. Uh, it was funny. Then, of course, always gets real when Dolph Ziggler comes out. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn eventually show up. This is a preview to their match later. Then you have Bailey comes out music. Crowd cheers. This is kind of our hometown area. Sacramento, I guess it's in that general vicinity. I have, I have no idea, though. Um, Alistair Black does a promo. He says, assistant, go get that door. The door is open. Pick a fight with me. And just yells at people like, <laughs> one day our truth is going to walk through that door. That'll be funny. Um, so, again, this sets up the mat. And then, of course, Nikki Cross makes her entrance to the ring. Um, Nikki's aggressive, but Bailey's even more aggressive. Ooh, she hit that reverse ET. That looked good. Then, of course, Bailey does her sliding in her sl ring slide kick. She got the first time, but never shows an opponent the same move twice because the second time, Nikki Cross did her apron spot, pulls the apron, catches Bailey, starts, starts to pummel Bailey. <laughs> Picks her a little bit when she's covered by the apron. That was actually pretty cool. That's a mean, mean, crazy Nikki. Ooh, I like me some mean, crazy Nikki. Even though, I think with the top, the way she wears it, her pants kind of around her hips. You see her lower back? Nikki Cross is pretty pasty looking. She has that Scottish blue skin tone going on. It makes sense though, I guess. She is from Scotland. Um, Bailey does a toe stomp to get rid of a straight jacket choke. Nikki should be doing toe stomps. Bailey is a move thief. And then she hits the big elbow and pins Nikki Cross. Well, that's good. I guess it's good that they got rid of the Bailey to belly because that was a lousy finisher anyway. Then you have a fun house replay. Again, good stuff. Again, it's, it's a rabbit stuff with duck, duck sauce. And then Selena Vega, uh, Apollo Crews had an interview. Selena Vega came out. Uh, oh! Just for Andrade Cien Almas. Um, a little tribute, I guess. I would like to offer my condolences on the passing of your mother. I um, heard about that. at kind of a downer. So... I hope all gets better soon and time heals all wounds. So, again, my condolences. I know it might seem shallow and meaningless, but again, I'm sure everyone would like to wish Andrade Cien Almas well. I don't know what his real name is. I have to look it up, but that's okay. Um, just a little somber moment there for him. And maybe I'll make a little tribute. Ten second tribute. Or whatever time that time that was. I'm I'm not super concerned with that. But again we do we would like to wish him the best we can, I guess, to offer our condolences. It's always that weird thing. Like, well, I hope everything is okay-ish. 
But let's get back to so so then Selena Vega comes out and she said something in Spanish. She must get confused. Her husband speaks Dutch. The guy she manages speaks Spanish. Granted, I think she knows a little Spanish, but primarily speaks English. That must be interesting. And then Chad Gable is there, like, taking notes with Apollo Crews, or on Apollo Crews, or on Selena Vega, or something. Chad Gable showed up with a haircut, too, by the way. Looks youngerish. Looks like an amateur wrestler, I guess. I don't know. Then we get to the main event of the evening. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and Dolph Ziggler versus New Day Rocks. New Day Rock. I do have to do that. I'll take a couple more minutes. That's okay. It's worth it. Um, a very classic wrestling match by Dolph. Um, we did see the return of the Unicorn Stampede, which is always good. We have the outside attacks by both Dolph and KO. Well planned. Um, Biggie, very limited action. I think he even got in one for his Unicorn Stampede. Then he got in towards the end. Uh, he hit two uh, belly-to-belly suplexes. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, Woods gets in again. He gets he, Woods gets a hot tag. Starts taking out uh, Sammy and Dolph. Um, Droff eventually crushes Xavier as he goes up to the top. Kevin Owens and he can be so cartoonish when he's selling. I forget what he did, but it was funny though. Oh, come here, fight me, fight me! As he taunts Biggie to come in. And the ref, of course, gets distracted by that, allowing Dolph to, to beat up Woods a little bit more. And again, classic tag team isolation. Um, my only fear, and it kind of happened, is that Sami Zayn is there to eat the pin again. And there was a spot where either Woods rolled the wrong way or Kevin Owens was short because Kevin Owens was going for a second rope corner springboard moonsault. And he hit. And as, as he was flipping over, Woods kind of rolled. And so I don't know if he rolled to take it or if Kevin Owens shorted himself a little bit. Whatever happens, eh, it was okay. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad of a botch. I, I've seen much worse. Again, you have the classic heel miscue. Um, Sammy eats a super kick from Dolph because eventually, well, well, Biggie does get tagged in, hits the uh, two belly to belly suplexes, does the Biggie splash, and they try to set up for up, up, down, down. Again, he doesn't hit it. Um, so Kofi's there for the up, up, down, down. And again, you have the heel miscue, and then. Kofi hits Sammy with a trouble in paradise, and Sammy used to pin from Kofi Kingston. And for the most part, it was, and that was a cheeseburger match. And really, for the most part, that was a that was a fun SmackDown. The matches weren't every, well, the matches weren't super terrific. But the pace of the show really helped it. The fact that the Miz went mad in the first segment said, this is going to be a good show. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, if you'd like to be like uh, Nick, someone, Nick Kelly, and come to you guy, you can always leave a comment, send an email, um, chat with me when I'm in the Discord group. I'll open that up there. Uh, send me a message uh, or respond to a message I post in the Friendoverse. And I will send you a video dedication in return. So everyone have a good night and I'll see everyone.